right, now we're going to look at Stephen Anderson's weird views of salvation. This is something I've been uh, exposing about him for a long time. He believes this false doctrine that salvation is simply believing without any kind of repentance, without a changed life. He does not believe in the new birth. And um, this is a thing that he got from Jack Hiles and this whole big numbers thing where you get thousands saved and everything. Of course, there's no change in their lives and they just go back and they become atheists eventually, whatever. But you just say they have eternal security whether or not they, you know, <laughs> were really saved or not in the first place. And it's kind of funny too because Stephen Anderson will teach that sodomites can't get saved because they've been turned over to a reprobate mind. And yet there are thousands, possibly millions of sodomites right now that go to sodomite churches and they believe that Jesus died for their sins. See, there's no birth, no new birth there, but according to Anderson, all you got to do is believe to be saved, but if you have a sodomite, they can't believe to be saved. It's really a warped system that he gets into. But let's just see how he, you know, kind of changes some things here um, when it comes to the Jews, dealing with the Jews. Because remember, you know, he believes that you just, you believe. You don't have to repent or have a changed life or anything. Let's watch. First clip here. So, obviously the Jews can be saved. Obviously they can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we should not hate Jews. You know, we, we shouldn't hate Jews. And yet he goes on to, to call them the synagogue of Satan and uh, to all these other names and things like this. And he believes in replacement theology. But he doesn't hate the Jews. They're the synagogue of Satan, but he just doesn't hate them. Yeah, a little bit of hypocrisy there. Let's watch the next video. I mean, think about it. If I hated the Jews, you know what I'd say to them? You guys are saved. You guys are fine. You guys are going to heaven. And then just laugh as they went to heaven. Okay. Uh, Anderson does hate the Jews. All right. He's over there and he's, he's saying, you know, there are no Jews. And, and these people over there, they're imposters. They've been put there by the Illuminati and the Rothschilds and all this other stuff. They're foreigners. They're strangers in the land. He doesn't love the Jewish people. Give me a break. Let's watch the next video. Just because we talk about the fact that in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel was elect when they were worshiping the Lord, when they were circumcised and keeping the Passover and worshiping the Lord, they were a chosen nation. They were a holy people that were to show forth the, the gospel unto the whole world in the Old Testament. Okay, so you have the Jews in the Old Testament. As long as they were doing good, they were, they were God's nation. When they weren't, then he just kind of forsook them until they did good again. Then he brought them back, you know, and it kind of got rid of the covenant, then restored the covenant, then got rid of the covenant, and then gave it to the Christians. Sure. Watch the next video. Now, of course, in the New Testament, the term elect is always just referring to believers in Jesus Christ because that's the New Testament doctrine. In the Old Testament, the elect is also referring to Jesus Christ or believers in Christ. Uh, does it refer to the nation of Israel? Sure, when they were worshiping the Lord. But nowhere does it refer to them when they have rejected the Lord. The Bible talks about the fact that any individual who uh, would break certain commandments would be cut off from the people. Again, nothing to do with salvation. Salvation has always been by grace through faith in the Old Testament, New Testament. But when it comes to being one of the chosen people in the Old Testament, it wasn't about salvation. It was about being a part of the nation, being circumcised, keeping the Passover, being part of the physical nation of Israel. In the New Testament, that has changed because the physical nation has been replaced with a spiritual nation made up of all believers, 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, Matthew 21, 43, and many other places, Romans 2, 28 and 29, lots of scriptures. Isn't it interesting how many lies he just told? And you, you end up forgetting the lies that he said at the beginning of that video clip. You think, what was it he said there? And think, I mean, this guy is such a liar. He, it's just lie upon lie upon lie. Now, the first lie that he told there, the first big one, there was a bunch of little stuff intersp interspersed there. He said that every time that the Bible talks about the elect, it's always talking about saved people. Here we have 2 Timothy chapter 2, right there, verse 10. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, 
that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Okay, I've said this many times in my studies. Right there is a reference to Paul saying he is enduring all things for the elect that they may also obtain salvation. All right, he's talking about lost Jews there. Okay, I mean, just absolutely incredible. Let's continue on to the next video here. You need to repent. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He made it very clear. Okay. So there, there it is. Anderson is saying that the Jews need to repent. But then they don't need to repent. They just believe. Okay. Next video. And people will wrongfully teach that you have to repent of your sins to be saved. Now, that is not a biblical teaching. It's not found anywhere in the Bible, and I'm going to prove that to you tonight. Okay, now here's the game that these guys like to play. They say, you have to repent of your sins, you know, that we teach that you have to repent of all your sins to be saved. Then they say, how can you possibly repent of every sin you've ever committed, huh? And how can lost people totally change their lives? That isn't what it means there in, the, in when, you, when you see in the Bible when it's talking about repentance that leads to salvation. It is the, a change of understanding you're a sinner. You know, I just did a whole study on this whole thing of the biblical definition of repentance. So I don't want to get into the whole thing here. You can watch that if you want all the little nitty gritty of the whole thing. But it's a change where you say, okay, I'm a sinner. I know that those sins condemn me to hell. I don't want to live in these sins anymore. I can't change them now because I'm lost. I can't totally clean my life up. I need God and His Holy Spirit to do that for me. But you can come to that place where you understand that you're a sinner, where your sins convict you and you feel guilty for those sins. That is there. But these guys, these heretics, these easy believers and people say, you don't have to have that feeling there. You don't have to do it that way. Let's watch the next video clip and I'm going to make a comment after this one. That tells me that believing's enough. That there aren't two things. There's only one thing that you have to do to be saved, and it's believe. Da -da 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 -da. Little, little, little act there. There's only not two things that you have to do to be saved. There's only one thing. Yeah, uh-huh, sure. And it's belief. Belief is enough. Okay, like I said earlier, uh, then sodomites, all they have to do is just believe in Jesus. Believe that Jesus died for their sins. And they're saved. Sure. And uh, I'd like Anderson to answer this question. Of course, he won't because he's a coward, but you know, I'd like him to answer this question, or any of his, his little cultic followers out there, answer this question for me. Okay? Belief is enough, huh? Okay, what would happen if a Jew got saved and continued going to the synagogue? Would that Jew have really truly been converted? Is that, is that an okay thing in God's sight? A Jew gets saved and continues going to the synagogue? Would that be acceptable? Maybe you ought to read the early part of the book of Acts sometime. That might give you a clue, you know? Next video. Because repentance is not some other extra thing that you have to do to get saved. Okay, repentance isn't some extra thing that you have to do to be saved. Well, okay then. If it's just belief, then the sodomite professing Christians are saved. Anybody that believes in Jesus Christ is saved. Repentance isn't some extra thing that you have to do. Okay, then Jews can get saved just simply by believing in Jesus Christ and they can continue going to the synagogue and just going and doing everything else. Next video. I preach repentance, but I don't preach that a person has to repent of their sins to be saved. And I'm going to tell you why, because that's works salvation. And I'm going to prove that to you from the Bible. Okay, again, there's this little word games that these easy believism people do. They say, repenting of your sins is works salvation. Well, if you mean by repenting of your sins that you clean up your life and get rid of all your sins and then get saved, repentance is granted to you, like you know a lot of the hyper-Calvinists believe, then yes, that is works salvation. But if you mean coming to God as a sinner and saying, I am not worthy, I, I can't save myself, you know, is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners? 
and you come to God and you say, I'm a sinner, I'm this and I'm that, and these are the things that are wrong with me, God have mercy on me, a sinner. That's not work salvation. Okay? Work salvation is doing good things. Charity, giving a charity and, and helping out at, you know, homeless shelters and whatever. And you count on those things to save you, excluding Jesus Christ. See? That's where these heretics get all messed up. Let's watch the last video clip. This is a terminal illness. Okay, because, you know, on the repent spec... Now, this guy, he's as clean as a whistle. He don't even have this disease. Okay, this guy over here, it's deadly. I mean, this guy's going to hell. I mean, if you're going to sit there and say that a person has to stop doing this and stop doing that, you must stop sinning in order to be saved. I mean, this guy is just preaching a pure uh, works-based salvation, and the Bible's real clear, this guy's not saved. Plain and simple. Okay. So again, you see the deception there. You know, you have to stop sinning to be saved. Well, if you're making it by the definition of doing a whole bunch of good works and that you can't ever sin again and then you get saved, yeah, that is lordship salvation. Yes, that is a heresy. That's hyper-Calvinistic type of thing that, you know, you're the elect, you're chosen and you just prove it by your life and then God grants you repentance and then you get saved. That is heresy. I do agree with that. But when you, you do this thing, and these guys continuously are doing this, they're saying, you have to clean up all your life to, in, to be saved and come to God as a sinner? No, you don't need to do that. It's just belief. And the reason they do that is because they themselves are just filled to the brim with sins and skeletons in their closets and whatever else. And I think there are some major skeletons in Anderson's closet. Okay, And he might eventually come out of the closet. If you know what I mean? You know, I mean, think about this. If Anders Snake is a covert Jesuit operative, Catholic operative, and I believe he is. I don't, I don't think that there's any question about that anymore. You know, what would be the best thing that they could do with him? Build him up to a level where he's really coming out and he's saying about sodomites should die and they should burn in hell and all this and we should kill them and stuff like this. And he just recently came out with this thing. I had a brother... Uh, post the article and thank you brother for that, doing that but came out with this thing that if we want an AIDS free Christmas we need to kill all the sodomites before December 25th now is that New Testament no it's not it's not all right if you want an AIDS free Christmas then you need to go out and all the sodomites I mean it's not even going to happen because the Bible would be wrong then because prophecy says things are going to you know wax worse and worse but the point is, you witness to them, right? You don't go out and murder them now. You know, we're not in that system anymore like the Old Testament. We're not under that anymore. You know, I do believe that sodomites can get saved. Now, is there a line that they can cross where they go and they become transgender or something like this and they have some kind of an operation or whatever? Yeah, I question somebody like that. I question whether or not they could get saved. I don't think that they can. But you get some guy that's messing around in sodomy or some woman that's messing around, you know, in, in, in sodomy, and you would call it lesbianism, you know. If you have somebody like that, could they get saved? Could they get to a point where they realize that they're a sinner and that that disgusting sin that they've been part of, you know, that they need to, to get away from that thing in order to be saved? You know, see? Yeah, I do believe that they can. But again, you know, this, this weird thing of this whole easy believism system is it's, a, it's all centered around one thing, and that is take a lighter attitude towards sin. Don't be so quick to judge people for sins. Don't be so quick to say this person's, you know, I don't really think that the conversion happened because they're like really living wickedly in sin and whatever else. That's why I have a big problem with this easy believism thing. So again, Anderson's not even preaching the true gospel. Just incredible. He's preaching a gospel of no repentance. Tell you what, this guy is very dangerous.